Hi, John McElroy here back at Carasoft with Terry Wachowski, president of Carasoft. Terry, you got a lineup of cars here, man. What, what do we got here and why do you have them out for me to look at? John, we got some vehicles for you to experience today. These are vehicles that we imported from China. Uh, remember we talked about the BYD Seagull? And we brought that over from China, and, right. and that was a pretty remarkable car. That was a cheap little car. car. Nice, nice, little car. cheap little car. Nice little These car. don't look like cheap little cars. And they're not. Uh, and and this, uh, this Chinese issue isn't just an $11,000 car, you know, small car, but we want to see how that's looking uh, more across the whole spectrum of cars. And so what we've got here today, we've got a, a Tesla Model Y. Because uh, Model Y is the standard, kind of, right? It's the standard it's here, you uh, bet. And then we have a, a, a close competitor to it in the, the Xiaoping G6. So you'll be able to do a head-to-head -head comparison here within our confines. Again, we can't go out on the roads because they're not uh, they're legal, not legal in, for, in the for U.S. The roads, right? Nope. But um, you know, you'll be able to get a feel for the amenities in the car and, and some of the, the performance. Um, and you know, when we look at the price point, again, that BYD Seagull issue comes forward here. It can be three thousand, four thousand dollars lower than this. Than the Tesla. Than the Tesla. Even though you say they, they go head to head, I mean that that's a nice uh, price yeah. discount to so try to sell. Head to head, and, and quite frankly, some advantage here on this model, uh, more recent and nicer amenities. Well, when we get in uh, a chance to drive it, point those out to me. We'll do. Uh, we also have a Zeker Model X. So this is another uh, EV that's come to market. Uh, and again, this is uh, you know, in the, the low 30s. So it's moving upscale, and, but still incredibly competitive. Uh, you know, the silhouette of this car the Zeker reminds me of the Volvo EX30. And I know uh, they're both part of Geely, so I'm sure this the Zeker is uh, going to cause headaches for Volvo. Yeah. Well, in fact, on the sill plate, it actually gives credit to Gothenburg. Oh. So there, there's a so shout the, the out basic back design to was, from the basic uh, right was, back was done to in Volvo. Sweden, yes, not exactly. in China. Yep. And on the end, what do you have here? Uh, this is a great looking this car. This is a, a really a, an incredible car. This is the Avatar 1-2. Uh, they had an Avatar 1-1. And now we've come up with the, the one, two. This is even more upscale. This is about $55,000 vehicle. But again, when you get inside of it and see the technology in here and see the, the execution, uh, pretty remarkable. No kidding. Yeah. Man. So there's an awful lot of interest in the uh, industry relative to what's happening in China and what to do, how that, what uh, threat that, that poses, what the challenges are. And uh, you know, this gives us an opportunity to do those analysis and help our customers figure that out. Cool. So let's go drive. Would you like because to drive? Because it's, it's great I to know. talk about them. But, you know, know. the know. proof in the pudding is in the driving, <laughs> as I've it. always said. So. Why don't we uh, take a quick spin in the Model Y to, yeah. to reacquaint? To, yeah, it's been uh, a couple of years level. since I've yep. been in a Y, so. And uh, then do a kind of a head-to-head -head comparison here. Cool, let's shopping. do that. Okay, so that, that's good for me to get in the Y and just sort of recalibrate everything. Yep. But you say this is the direct competitor. That's a head-to-head -head competitor, Xiaoping G6. G6. Um, very much similar in, in size and, and uh, dimensions of the vehicle. The real interesting thing, John, is when you look under the skin, that uh, mega castings in the front. Oh, mega casting is in the rear. Oh, no kidding. Battery integrated as the floor pan. So uh -huh. very, it's not only the same size in many architectural ways, so extremely uh, similar, close to the Very interesting. And, you know, I mean, I'm just doing a, a cursory walk around, checking gaps and the like, but the fit and finish on this thing is really good. Fit and finish is, is very good. Um, They've, they've done a nice job, and, and that also shows in areas like um, 
road noise, wind noise, that type of thing. Yeah. So, uh, you know, best to tell by driving it around. So let, let, let's get in, right. You know, Terry, as soon as I get in the car, first thing that I notice is it's not that minimalist look that Tesla has. I mean, there, there's no buttons or everything. It looks like pretty much everything goes through the center screen, although you do have a couple of stalks and some buttons on the steering wheel. So it, it's copied Tesla in that regard, but much brighter colors. The, the hand, as the designers say, the feel of the materials feels richer than what we just got out of the, yep. in the Model Y. Those are some of my first impressions. Yeah, it's much softer to the hand. It's, uh, you know, the contrasting materials that they, they brought in looks, it looks very nice. The, um, it has a, a screen in front of the driver as opposed to putting everything over here in the center right. stack. So you've got an but instrument you cluster instrument plus cluster. the center screen. So it's, it's, it's a little different. And it's got a sort of almost rectangular yeah, steering wheel, yeah, and yeah. Not, not perfectly round. So that that's kind of like Tesla, at least with the Cybertruck. But it is more round, so you know the deviation is uh, is less noticeable mm -hmm. and, uh, while you're driving. I think you probably get used to it a little quicker. And you uh, say we'll see another vehicle today where it's yeah, way out there yeah, again. Okay. And you're saying this one's three to four thousand dollars. Five thousand. Five thousand cheaper so than if, the Model Y. So if that Model Y was uh, about thirty-seven thousand, this thirty-three. Wow. Okay, let's go. This, Enough talking. That was almost 38, yeah. This let's see what this is. This is an 800 volt battery pack. Uh huh. So it's Model Y is a 400 volt pack. This is 800. So we're getting more range, faster charging. So far, I would say I, I can't describe any different just driving around here that's all that much different than the Model Y. So it's, I'm hearing a little similar, bit of buzzing. Similar, isn't it? You know, going over all this, this bumpy pavement. Yep. You know, some of the things are getting excited. And, and a little bit of a rattle somewhere in the, the steering column area. Uh, but like the Model Y, there's that low resonant boom that's, that's coming through uh, the body. And I, I think that's a problem with a lot of modern cars today as their structures have gotten so much stiffer than they were in the past. But it's especially true of electric cars where the battery beca pack becomes part of the structure. And then like you're saying, you've got those giga castings that make it even stiffer still. A lot of that you're hearing is the, the rear lift gate because it wants to vibrate, resonate like a big drum. So controlling that and getting that, that's part of the, uh, the fit and finish goes to the efforts to close those and open those and then how well do they set in there so that they don't buzz or rattle or cause this, some of these boom uh, type problems. Now one thing you can hear in the background is some of the noise generation. Right. The can you EV? hear the, the, I, the, the EV yeah. uh, noise generator? The, the futuristic yeah, weirdo nah, sound. <laughs> you can just start to pick it up here. <laughs> okay, I think I'm clear to go here. Very nice, easy pickup, mm -hmm. you know, which of course you expect yeah. from an electric vehicle. No surprise you can there. Go right or left down here a little yeah, bit. Let's go down here, yeah. and I just want to put my foot into it a bit more and see what happens. So here goes. Okay, so not blindingly quick. I mean, accelerates very, very nice, but it's not that pinion the back of the seat kind of feel. Yeah. Like most all electric vehicles, a lot of torque, a lot of instantaneous low and torque just to, for that great acceleration. Is it make you scream? No, you know, they're gonna put you in the back seat. <laughs> I don't know that you necessarily want to or need to on every model. No, 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 no. You know, it's just that, you know, so many people comment on the, yeah. the kind of acceleration that you can get out of some electric cars. That's why I'm commenting yeah. on it. Yeah. For the average person, no, you don't need that That's neck right. snapping acceleration. In fact, it's it's probably past the limit as it is. That's right. 
Can you do it from a dead stop? Yeah, let's do it from a dead stop. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. So quite good, yep. but not scary good. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. So very interesting. I, I think shafang has got a real serious competitor to the, the Model Y here. I mean, they drive so similarly. Yeah. When you look at some of the styling cues, and the performance, and then you start putting the, the cost delta in here, it's like, oh, this is, this is significant. Yeah, it really is. You know, if they're $5,000 cheaper than Tesla, the key, of course, is are they making money on it? We know Tesla's making money right. on it. Right. Very comfortable. It rides nicely. Yep. The seats are comfortable. The seats are holding me, yep. I'm not going to say snugly, but there's good support. I kind of get the impression that I could drive this. I could drive this every day. This isn't bad. No, I'm driving its competitor, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going to have to this wait is, for the this geese. This would be a uh, natural right away here. Yeah. The geese and their goslings are crossing the road in front of us, and so we're going to wait a second until <laughs> they get all the way across. <laughs> Man, there's a lot of them. Yeah. Grass is greener on this side over yeah. there. <laughs> so, very interesting. I mean, Tesla definitely has got a competitor on its hands with this car. Yeah. And at this price point, yeah. even more so. And you're saying they, they pretty much just copied what they could from Tesla. It's very, very similar. So it got them to market very quickly, too. Yep. yep. Okay, so now we've got this now the, we have the, the Zeker. The Zeker X here. The Zeker, Zeker X. X. And what's the price on this one offhand? You know? This is actually cheaper than this one. Yeah. This is about $30,000. Thirty grand. Wow. Is this hood closed all the way? Okay, so here I would say the fit on this hood yeah. doesn't look all that great. Especially when you look at the difference here to here. Yeah, yeah. Right, that's where it really reads. Right. So, yeah. so that I, I would knock it for build quality on that regard. Um, the rest of it looks pretty good though. You know, just doing a quick eyeball of, it, uh, of the whole thing. But uh, yeah, let's get in this and go for a ride too. Now this one, just touch the button and the door opens itself. And it'll also oh, close, close itself. itself. Whoa. Heaven help that you have to actually close the door. Just, yeah. it just, and it's smart. If there's something in its way, it'll stop. Unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, for a $30,000 car, yeah. that's unbelievable. So, Terry, my, my first, you know, impressions of this car is, you know, it, it's a, a lower segment market vehicle, but I really like this green color in here. You know, it's got a very subdued look to it. It's very soft on my eyes, very relaxing. Also interesting, uh, the top of the IP here, all this dimpling on it, and I see it, it, it says Yamaha. Yamaha so sound it, system. It yep. must be Yamaha sound system, yep. right. Yep. And then you were pointing out it has this thing here that 
almost looks like a, a cigarette lighter. First thought it was a cigarette lighter and then realized, oh no, it's just a, a means to hang a, a litter bag or a, a purse handle or something that you can just wrap around. That's all it does. But it, and it, of course, uh, disappears if you don't want it. Kind of a, a unique little feature. It's well equipped for, yeah. you know, this electric car, uh, kind head of a, up display, a bold, right? A bold choice of colors here and the I, color matching, but I think it works. I, I think it, it does nice. too. I, I like the look. Yeah. And uh, again, uh, you get a instrument cluster behind the steering wheel. You've got the center screen. You got a few buttons, but obviously most of any of the operations done through the screen. Right. So minimize some of the, the buttons. They do have some capacitance touch buttons here on the on the wheel. Mm -hmm. It has a heads up display. The the display on the windshield I, I found to be very crisp. Very I could see it mm -hmm. very clearly with good focus, good brightness. Um, the actual unit mounted on the IP is uh, a bit unsightly. Uh, Not as well integrated right. as some others have done. That's exactly right. right. Uh, it's got this uh, nice, almost Alcantara look, some sort of flocking on the A pillars. So again, you know, it, it's made to look a little bit more upscale, but you're saying this is around 30,000 bucks. 30,000 huh? bucks, so. change, yeah. You have a, a sunglass holder uh, right <laughs> up on your, on your pillar. That's right. <laughs> you could put it up there. Interesting. Well, let's take it out uh, for a little bit of a drive here. Okay. I didn't get it and drive it first. Yeah, hit neutral. Now I got it. Very smooth ride. This is, uh, you know, what I like to call an easy car to drive. Some cars are, uh, they just seem easy. I don't know how to explain it better than that. It, it, everything just comes naturally to you. And and this is one of them. Yeah, yeah it's, it's comfortable and quiet and smooth. It's steering efforts feel right. And on center, it feels very good. So this is very interesting where, you know, over this bumpy pavement, we're on the Chapung and the Tesla. We're he hearing a little bit of buzzing of the plastics, a little bit of a rattle. And it, in this car, nothing. Uh, I mean, this thing's rock solid. That's right. If you can feel, get a vehicle that feels good on that piece of road, it, they've accomplished something. Right, and uh, it's a smaller vehicle, so we're not getting quite the, right. that low boom resonance. Right. In, in the other cars, or maybe they've just done a better job of deadening that. Well, I think people could easily live with a car like this, electric car like this. Let's do the, the same sort of acceleration. We'll do both ways, but let's see what this is like. Wow, this feels faster. Now that time my head bounced off the headrest, the so Chappelle. either I wasn't ready or it's faster. Yeah, let's do it from a dead stop and <laughs> see how it accelerates. Okay, so zero to, wow. <laughs> zero to wow. Yeah, <laughs> zero to wow. So it's not that much quicker than the Chapung we just got out of, yeah. but right off the line, bam, it delivers more power. This is Zeker, it's under the Geely umbrella yeah. of, of vehicles. And this was one that you said is uh, traces its heritage back to Gothenburg, Sweden. Yeah. Now this, this center console is uh, electric, so you can see it's adjustable. Oh my gosh, that is a cool and feature. And it also has a cooler and a heater. No. So this is actually a refrigerated cooler. You put in air, it's kind of cold in there right now. So you get a lot of value for your money, a yep. lot of features. 
and there's also a council without that that comes that you can just trade them out. So this is why the legacy automakers are so afraid of what's coming out of China, or one of the reasons. You know, it's not a, an $11,000 BYD Seagull, 30000 bucks this one instead, and uh, but you get a lot of nice features. It drives very well. Um, do you think this would meet U.S. crash standards? Um, I, I doubt it, as is. So again, there's probably other work that they would have to do to homologate it to, to U.S. standards, but that those are all doable. Yeah, not only doable, but the guys in Gothenburg know how to do it. Oh, they, 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 that's their forte. Cool. Okay. So it's hands-free. Oh, yeah. Just button. And it's a, a smart door, so something standing in its way or an object that won't do it. That's really impressive that you just push a button to open and close the door. You don't have to pull it yourself. Again, you know, I've seen that on the Tesla Model X, for example, but not on a $30,000 car. That's incredible. Okay, last on the list. What do we got here? Well, this is the Avatar 1 2. Yeah. So this is uh, even much more upscale. This is about a $55,000 car. Yeah. But it, it's a great looking vehicle and a lot of new technologies in it as well. So. Yeah, I especially like uh, the rear three quarter view of this vehicle. Well, let's get inside. One thing you notice from out here is uh, it doesn't have rear view mirrors. Oh. So you can see that those cameras. are just, just cameras that are stuck. Right, which are not legal in the U.S., right. at least not yet. I think this vehicle has like three LiDAR systems, has 11 cameras. Oh my gosh. And so they're, they're really pushing, you know, from, from an autonomous perspective, a lot right. of... Lot of uh, so this has got to be hands-free driving, Is maybe even eyes off if it's got all those sensors. It's... But yeah, this, it looks really sleek. Yeah. Big 21 inch tires. Brembo brakes. Brembo brakes, yeah. You get a lot here. And again, the, the doors are smart. They won't open if it thinks it's going to hit something. So, Terry, my first impressions are of this Avatar is again. You just touch this button on the door, the door closes automatically. You know, the Zeker did that too. This has got to be a thing in China, right? right? That you don't even have to push open the door or pull it closed. The car will do it for you. Right, smartly. So if there's something there that's going to hit, it won't do it. It'll just go as far as it can go and then and stop. So, yeah. Yep. The other thing I noticed too, as you pointed out, it does not have rear view mirrors. It's got cameras. And so the screens for them are right inside the eight pillars, which yeah. I like, yeah. because I can glance down very, very quickly and get what's on either side of the car instead of having to move my, my head to, to look at the mirrors. And then the, the inside rear view mirror too is a camera. And what I like about this is, usually I don't like these inside rear view cameras uh, or you know video screens, because to look to the outside mirrors, your focal plane is, or your focal point is you know, where the object behind it is. And then you look at this and the focal point is right here. Whereas when you've got all three mirrors with the same focal point, it, it doesn't cause any discombobulation with right. me. No, there's a little bit of a learning curve. This one was easy because mm -hmm. you're kind of looking towards this mirror. Right. This one, I find myself first looking here where the and, mirror and should where be. Where the mirror should be. Right. Like, oh, and shoot. And, then I, and so I, I'm thinking it's a learning curve you have to go through. This uh, camera and this view is because there is no backlight in this car. You could have a mirror here, be useless. Oh, yeah. You'd just be looking at a blank yeah. hole. Oh, right. you know? So there, there's no backlight at all. So it relies on this camera mm -hmm. solely. And interesting, uh, you've got the center screen like every car these days does, uh, but the upper part of the IP is a big screen that has a lot more things to look at and play around with. Absolutely. And uh, this is Huawei's 
This uh, is a 34 and a half inch screen wow. up here. So kind of setting a the standard there, almost 16 inch central display here. Mm -hmm. And interesting, you know, Huawei pretty much banned by the American government from doing any business in the U.S. because they were co concerned of it gathering all kinds of uh, stuff and maybe being a cybersecurity and a national security risk. But Huawei and is together with... Uh, who else is on this car? Well, this uh, avatar is, um, it, it's, it's a state-owned joint, joint venture, CATL. right? So state-owned. And CATL. So Chanyang this is like. And, and CATL, yep. The powerhouse tech companies of China for automotive, at least, getting together on a car. These are these are the big guys. Yeah, Man. And you, and you said this car again is about 50,000? Yeah, it was, uh, I think it was 54. 50, 54. 54. Uh, wait. I'm sorry, 55.6. 55, 55.6, six. So 55, six, okay. This one, we got it with 55.6, yeah. Very interesting. Well, let's get out and about with this thing. As I, as I mentioned, this one has three uh, LIDARs. Uh -huh. It has three radars. It has 11 cameras. Okay, I'm not moving. It's not going into... Key not detected. Okay, where do we have to put the key? somewhere here this thing doesn't sense the key all right well so this is kind of funny tap the key where it says don't tap the key like there yep and that works <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i should have known you would always do whatever it said not to <laughs> right hey got it figured out <laughs> so. so now you we've got it uh, in drive Got the bird's eye view here. So yeah, this has got the very rectangular kind of steering right, wheel. Right, right, right. Which is kind of awkward. Got a car coming here. And this has got a, a much louder synthesized noise this is than a, the other cars. This, what this is, is that sound synthesizer. And they try to make it sound like a combustion engine. Yeah. It's I'll got a growl it to it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You first get in, what in the world is going on? You know, in real hardcore performance driving, I actually like that extra sound. Yeah. Because it gives you uh, a greater sense of how you're accelerating, and especially when you're decelerating, that that sound, sound, yeah. you know, feedback. Yeah. Is is beneficial, but for yeah. just driving around, I think it's kind of dumb. It's a binaural tachometer. You can know where the uh, where you are, but again, with this one, it's pretty much a, a trick here. This is uh, sounds engine sounds simulator. <laughs> Oops, sounds. Oh, look, at, you can make it sound like a V12, a V8, or a V6. There we go. There's the V8. There's the V8. That sounds dumb. I'm sorry. <laughs> that just sounds dumb. Try the V12. Let's see what that is. There's the V6. V6. That sounds even worse. There's the good old days. <laughs> There's that throaty V12. Yeah, that's a dumb idea. I'm sorry. And that's what an EV sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> I prefer the EV yeah, sound I do too. way more than the fake V8, 6, or 12. So let's see how this does acceleration-wise, too. It should do a lot better. Let's get over these bumps first. Okay. Oh yeah, this has got a little bit of torque steer too. Interesting. But uh, and let's do it from a dead stop too, just to see what it feels like. Okay, there's zero, and here we go. Now, very interesting. So, I put my foot to the floor. There was no reaction, and it slowly builds up. Yep. 
Now, what I find interesting from that is, you know, you keep hearing all these stories of how EVs burn through their tires. This car's not going to burn no, through its tires, at no. least not in this setting. There's probably a different sports setting that we could get that would have, yeah. you know, more instantaneous response. But this is a very uh, modulated throttle input, yeah. if we can call it a throttle. Uh, yeah. I'd call it good throttle progression. Yeah. You have good control over it. It's not, you know, jerky and right. you're digital. But Now, the only thing I don't like is... You know, if I'm pulling out and I don't have good visibility and all of a sudden I see the cement trucks barreling down <laughs> at me at 60 miles an hour, yeah. I want to go. Yeah. I don't want this modular slow <laughs> speed build up. I want to go. go. So uh, I, I think in terms of not burning up your tires, that's a good idea. But <laughs> I, I want go power when I want it. It's a 900 volt fast charging battery system. Ooh, interesting. So the, the ride is good, it's handling the bumpy pavement well, but I wouldn't necessarily say it was better than the other ones that we've been in. So it's a more expensive car, but I can't say that I feel like there's better cabin isolation or you know better NVH control. It, it's good, it's just good. It's, it's good. I, I just think for you know a car that is yeah. substantially more expensive, uh, it doesn't seem like um cocooned and you know more luxury or something like that i like the uh the steering feel myself i thought it was a good linear feel i like i do uh, though i prefer a round wheel yeah. i do too <laughs> by far uh, but. and you know the 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 steering just making that turn now we're at low speed i don't know if it's speed sensitive but it's not quite as linear yeah. As I would like it to be. And see, this is where that oblong wheel really becomes a problem. Yeah. Backing up, backing up a trailer, backing up like this is right, really right. tough, tough duty. But a uh, but a very nice car overall. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the the Napa leather, the the appointments, the interior. Right. Are very sharp. That's right. That's one thing I think Tesla is going to have to think about. The display is incredible, and I'm sure the uh, the connectivity and the integration of mm -hmm. all the systems. You know, this uh, is just an extension of your phone when you when you go forward. So. Right. I know we've barely scratched the surface of of what these cars are able to do. We just took them for a quick little drive mm -hmm. first impression thing. I know we're going to learn a lot more from you guys in the future. Yeah. Well, that's what we want to do, really understand them well. Um, you know, what's the strengths? Where are their weaknesses? What's, uh, what do they bring? But just kind of a cursory at the price point they have. And if you look at the quality that they're delivering, you know, it's really excellent quality. Yeah, it, it really and is. And it's a, a lot of value at this price. Right. And, and like you were saying, the LiDARs and all the other sensors they've got on this, I'm sure, you know, It'd be great to get it out on uh, the road and see what kind of uh, hands-free driving right. or, you know, right, right. what level that they've taken. You know, is it level 2, 2.5, level 3, what? You know, uh, I'll bet it's awfully yeah. good. Yeah. And how good does it feel when, when it's in control? That's right. You, are you comfortable? Are you relaxed? Or it's like, are you... I'm, I'm full alert. Right. John, that seat is, uh, they have what they call a zero G seat, so you can adjust it and it comes out almost flat. Yeah. Well, Terry, thanks so much for this demo. Always learn a ton being with you, and it's great to be able to share this with all our viewers. And uh, I know, like I said, inside the car, once you dig into it, you're going to learn a lot more of what they can do. Yep. Well, I'm glad you can come out and, and see the vehicles. I think it's, uh, yeah, this is really a, an important time for the auto industry. And I think taking a good hard look at this is absolutely yeah. critical right now. Totally agree. This is a wake up call for all yeah. the legacy yeah. automakers absolutely. all around the world. Absolutely. Thanks again, Terry. Much My appreciated. Pleasure. Thank yeah. you.